Hello, this is Maha Habib speaking. It is with great pleasure that I present for the Religion and Spirituality in Society Conference. The paper is Islam and Modernity in Egypt, Contention and Resolve. The paper focuses on the relationship of Islam to modernity. The main premise is that there is uh, quite a bit of cultural consistation and struggle with self-definition in key Egyptian narratives. This is evidence of contestation over the way in which to conceptualize Islam in modernity. Um, there is also a search for viable options, however this does not lead to stability in identity or final solutions. I'd like to start by giving a small historical background of Islamic Reformation. Islamic Reformation efforts have always inf been informed by necessities from within the community of adherence. However, uh, with the advent of colonialism, the introduction of the concept of the nation-state and the ushering of the age of modernity, the form and the structure of such reformation was much informed by the relationship of Islam and its adherence to the other, the West and its knowledge systems. Islam has since been confronted with the question of its own validity from inside and outside the community of adherence. The struggle with the place of religion, the place of the sacred, has since played out within Egypt, at times expanding, at others withdrawing, as it dealt with various political, social, and cultural forces. This has presented and continues to present its adherence with the dilemma of identity. Since the fall of the, uh, the Ottoman Empire, Muslims have suffered fundamental problems over national identity, Muslim identity, and the way in which to comprom comprise the two. Various uh, significant changes have since taken place. For instance, Al-Azhar, as a key uh, religious institution of, li of religious knowledge and learning, other religious institutions, and the ulama as figures of authority, were all decentered and placed under the control of those in power, whether during the colonial period or post-independence. This control and subsequent efforts at reform changed the nature of religion as understood and practiced by its adherents. Furthermore, Western systems of thought based on enlightenment principles of the primacy of scientific empiricism, rationality, individualism, and freedom gained and received an increasing level of interest, attention, and focus by the intelligentsia of the time. Colonialists, nationalists, and Islamic modernists all attempted to reframe the sacred, all having a great and effectual role in knowledge creation and representation of and about Islam, its doctrine, its system of codes and ethics, and its practice. Essentially, Egyptian society has been penetrated by a wide array of referential points that inform members of society of parameters, parameters by which to measure various concerns and various levels of commitment to issues uh, related to divine commitment or divine law or the commitment to um, religious uh, adherence. The current intellectual anomaly is threatening and unsettling to an individual sense of Muslim identity. The intellectual landscape, landscape within a Muslim context has become far too fragmented. It is characteristic of uncertainty. New systems of meaning do not sustain the continuity of religious narrative or religiously derived ontology and epistemology and their presence and authority in identity and through religiosity. New sources of being have been conceptualized, that of Pharaonism or Egyptian nationalism, in which identity becomes synonymous with territory. This is evident in two seminal narratives, Al-Hakim's Return of the Spirit and Haikal's Zainab in which a change in consciousness is quite evident. The change in consciousness meant that the hierarchy of existence as present within Islam is delimited. Intellectual sense have attempted to answer a, f a central question, how to resituate Islam in modern contexts. For instance, Haikal attempted in the 1930s and 1940s to endorse, endorse Islamic teachings, while Hakim attempted to theorize the conception of Islamic secularism, one that accounts for both the worldly and the otherworldly. Others, such as Al-Aqad and Ahmad Amin, attested the viability of Islam and attempted to verify its discourse and its applicability in modern terms. The Muslim Brotherhood, the Islamic revival of the 1970s and 1980s, and contemporary centrist voices all attempted to do much the same, situate Islam in modern contexts. The dilemma is expressed in the struggle over the degraded position of the past, the eternal status of religion, and the desire to seek progress. It is a dilemma of identity, one expressed in fictional narratives, of which Yahya Haqqi's Lamp of Imhashim is an example. Yahya Haqqi's Lamp of Imhashim expresses 
the old, new, traditional, modern duality. It presents the overriding of religious consciousness by secular consciousness through the character of Ismail. Ismail uh, travels abroad to Europe to gain secular education and in the process a change in consciousness consciousness occurs in which he begins to rely more on secular uh, logic over religious logic in his self-formation and his understanding of reality and self-existence. The tensions that arise are resolved by Haqi through one formula, no knowledge without faith. However, this faith fails in Najib Mahfouz's The Cairo Trilogy. In The Cairo Trilogy, the, ca the uh, character of, of Kamal presents the dilemma. Kamal wanted to find a balance between the secular and the modern, the, the secular and the religious in his character and in, in his reality. However, in confronting the changing sociocultural reality, he realizes that the era of religion has passed. For instance, friends of an elite class offer him ham and alcohol, and upon his refusal, suggest that he is a Hanbali fundamentalist, which is a, an extreme school of thought in Islam. He is perplexed by this form of identification of his character or his religious practice and perplexed at the way in which sacred truth is downgraded. His belief is in the end shaken and a change in consciousness occurs in which he begins to see Darwin's theory and the Big Bang theory as explanations for the origin of the universe and the origin of man respectively. As religious structures are overridden and Muslim consciousness is altered, the dilemma is deepened. With an individual consciousness, severe discord was created between the surviving structures of traditional civilizations and the new structures of knowledge and meaning. Secular culture of the elite and popular traditional mass culture are, are contrasted. The discontinuity and inconsistency in historical narrative and its structures meant a difficulty in defining ontology and a perturbed self-perception. The end result is the absence of collective consciousness. Drift on the Nile by Mahfouz is a novel discussing this existential dilemma. It exemplifies ambivalence, the state of being adrift in the absence of structure, direction, and the state of being in discord as society is de-traditionalized and dehistoricized. This novel can be read for the resonating anti-structure, the overbearing ambivalence and loss of meaning, and the collapse of belief, a belief in anything. It charts the lives of characters through meetings set on a houseboat, where di undirected, uncentered discussions about politics, state of society, history, and meaning take place. These discussions are largely unguided and uncentered, without any meaning taking form or direction taking place. One character, Samara, talks over or thinks over the problem of the of religious people. She was, suggests that as religion has offered meaning in the past, a new language of man must be created to offer much the same in modern contexts. However, the novel ends without that taking place. As the pre-existing social and ideological forms of, of knowledge disintegrate, the individual is left to his or own, her own individuality in structuring his or her realities, systems of thought, and in writing his or her own biographies. In the plunge into modernity, God, nature, truth, science, morality, love, marriage, family, and gender roles are all turned into freedoms. Morality itself becomes contingent on personal preference. The individual then becomes overtaxed by countless authorities intervening in his or her understanding of the self, the understanding of traditions, and in the construction of new forms of thought and new forms of social structures. This is evident in Mahfouz's Ibn Fatuma, which is an allegory of loss and the search for sacred truth. The character of Ibn Fatuma searches for the lost world of Islam. His sense of loss and uncertainty is compounded by the absence of the, the religious structure of knowledge and the absence of religious itself in life. He loses himself in various ideologies in the hope of finding the sacred truth. He is undirected, unguided, and is able to remold in any new form he finds. The resolution is not offered in this novel. In Latifa Zayat's The Open Door, the taxing inability to maneuver in life is evident in more practical terms. The character of Layla, in facing various practical com complexities to do with women's education, marriage, gender roles, social engagement, conservatism, and morality, 
faces pains of individuation and faces the fragmented nature of her living experience. What is often a center of concern in her discoveries and in her, in her emerging individuality is the sense that she must negotiate between the fundamentals, the predefined notions for social thought and practice, and between all that is new in the evolving social and cultural contexts. Her pains and anxieties are revealed, re revealed in these expositions. In the process, she learns that the pains of the new come at the cost of traditions and multiple complexities must be faced with little certainty and contradictions are also rampant. Solutions here are also minimal. There is no question that the general Muslim condition can be characterized with discord and ambivalence. In looking at the, in looking at the narrative expressions of the dilemma, one finds contentions and attempts at finding resolve. There is definitely a search for solutions and for stability. It is in striking a balance between religion and modernity, as Haqi expresses, and finding a new language to speak through in modern contexts, as Mahfouz suggests in Adrift on Lyle, or perhaps it is never to be realized except in an ulterior state of existence or ulterior ide ideologies, as suggested in Ibn Fatuma. Perhaps it is simply an openness to newness and to change, even at the cost of traditions, as Al Zayyad suggests. In all these various searches and narrative conclusions, one finds the discord and the sense of ambivalence and the unrelenting desire to make sense of the world. Thank you. This culminates the paper.